know anybody that would have watched this on pay-per-view. I don't know anybody that would have been asked to pay for it, any of that stuff. But uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there. Mike Sempervivi here with you. Brian Alvarez not here. So for you, ASMR kids. I need that. I needed that to get through the show last night. Uh, Hell in a Cell, yeah, Yingling Center, Tampa, Florida, University of South Florida. Last time there, my apologies to Eddie. I know he's very sad about this, but that's okay. It's okay. You never know what could happen. We could have another outbreak again, and they could be shoved right back into the Thunderdome. But I would, I would tend to doubt it. But uh, really a surprise. They didn't do a whole lot of nonsense or, or, or fun with the computer screens last night in, the, in the, the Thunderdome for the last time. I would have figured they would have done something, especially in the Alexa Bliss match. But that did not happen. It was a... It was an okay show. Unless you paid for it, if you paid more than four ninety nine on Peacock for this show, it wasn't worth it. It was a tidy two hours and 50 minutes, as Brian had predicted yesterday. That's about the time it was going to go, and that's the, the time that it did go. And it wasn't offensive, for the most part, for the, those three hours, but it also wasn't really all that exciting, to be honest with you. The main event was really, really good with Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, if he didn't win, it was his last opportunity to have a title shot against Bobby Lashley as long as he holds on to the title. We got interference because it's a hell in a cell, so you got to have interference. We got interference from MVP in the match, which did not lead directly to the finish. Drew McIntyre, the match went on for several minutes after that and ultimately... Bobby Lashley would get the pin with, and just after both guys brutalized each other. I mean, that was the one thing about this match was they just killed each other. And Brian, unfortunately, I don't want to say unfortunately, but was proven right here. And the only reason I'm saying unfortunately is he's going to rub it in over and over again saying, see, I told you as soon as Drew got the visual victory and got the pinfall over Bobby Lashley on Monday, I told you he wasn't winning. And that was true. He wasn't. It was really a surprise. And I was surprised when they gave Drew that victory last week because, well, if Drew is going to win and you've waited this long, why didn't you just have him do it on the pay-per-view? Well, now that we we see why they didn't do it at the pay-per-view, because Bobby Lashley was going over, which leads to the biggest question, well, now what? For both guys, now what? To me, Bobby Lashley's path is really easy. Kofi Kingston's right there. They have been teasing this deal with Kofi and the the headache uh, with with Xavier Woods. And I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, If you're going to try to make Kofi a, a real contender here, I would assume you would have to do something with, with, with Xavier. I mean, to me, I, I don't, as him as the foil to MVP, I don't think works. I think you either need to injure him, which gives Kofi a little bit of, of extra oomph as far as going after Bobby Lashley, or you could have Xavier turn on Kofi or play that angle to kind of bring some drama to, to this whole thing. Because I just think on its own, it's going to be maybe it's it's probably going to be a tough sell. Then again, if you have Brock coming in for SummerSlam, maybe it's not that hard of a sell. You just got to get through a month, get through money in the bank, and then, boom, you jump right into Brock Lesnar. But if you want to try to throw some intrigue behind Kofi competing for the championship, that's probably what it's going to be. Now, when it comes to Drew McIntyre, that's a little bit of a different story here. Uh, The obvious answer to me would be Sheamus. His old buddy Sheamus, his old fighting partner and opponent Sheamus, the Intercontinental Champion who, you know, doesn't really seem to be doing anything with it right now. I believe he's the Intercontinental Champion, right? He's the IC Champion and 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 Sami Zayn, or sorry, not Sami Zayn, but uh, Apollo Cruz is the the cruiserweight. How the hell does this work? Who's the U.S. Champion? Who's the IC Champion? 
I don't know who the IC champion is. I don't know either one. Doesn't matter. One has one belt. The other has the other belt. And Drew McIntyre will be facing Sheamus, I would assume, for his version of the belt. The U.S. title it is. It's, uh, yeah, these belts mean nothing to me. I was going through the list, by the way, uh, of champions in WWE. I, NXT, if you look at, they have a ridiculous amount of belts. Between NXT UK I, I, Kushida, Karrion Cross, Raquel, Bronson Reed, MSK, Candice and Indy, LA Knight, Walter, Mako Satamura, Tyler Bate. Does the Heritage Championship count as a is a everyday defended championship? And pretty deadly. Sam Stoker and Lewis Howley. They are your NXT UK tag team champions. Anybody not from the UK, tell me who Sam Stoker and, and, and Lewis Howley are. I, regardless of that. To me, back to the original point, I could see Sheamus and Drew being the best type of of therapy for Drew after this deal with with Bobby Lashley because I don't want to say he's the ultimate failure, but he has had how many opportunities at Bobby Lashley and come up short, and this was going to be his last chance to have the title? Well, unless he's going to win Money in the Bank or Bobby Lashley's going to lose the title, how else does he get him back in the title title picture? I don't know how you do it. So for right now, this is probably the best deal to, to put him in with Sheamus, but we'll have to kind of see how that goes. Now, nothing else matched the physical intensity that those two guys put themselves through last night at all. And, and Drew McIntyre, if you saw the pictures on his Instagram, on his Twitter of his back, completely all lit up. It was a brutal beating that he took, and, and they busted their ass. And there was there was a lot of that last night. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, and Cesaro and Seth Rollins were two really good uh, uh, versions of that. Uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, especially Kevin Owens, was fantastic, and he already went into the match selling that Nigerian nail that he he, he suffered at the hands of Commander Aziz, where. You know, he was always having problems speaking and, and breathing and all of that going into the match. And we've seen Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens a zillion times over the years. But we haven't really seen a match like this where Kevin Owens is the one in peril for the entire match. And that was already in play starting the match with the throat injury. But then Sami Zayn does a flip dive out on top of Owens during the match, early on in the match, where immediately Kevin Owens starts selling his arm, his left arm. And you thought at first, did he actually, like, bust his shoulder? You know, did he dislocate his shoulder? Is he trying to pop it back in? And I don't think that was the case. He just sold, like, a zillion dollars. And, again, a great twist on a match we've seen a million times where Kevin Owens was now really in peril, suffering from not only the throat but the arm. Sammy went after it, and I thought did a absolutely fantastic job. Ultimately, Sammy got the win in about 13 minutes, but a really impressive performance by both men, but especially the way that Kevin Owens sold. He really, again, a great twist on a match that we've seen a million times, and as somebody pointed out on Wrestling Observer Radio last night, first win in four years for Sammy Zayn facing off against Kevin Owens. I looked at the numbers myself. Nine wins now to three for Kevin Owens over Sami Zayn uh, under the WWE Titan auspices. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.